Hi everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It, and in this video I'm going to show you how to quickly paint up your Necrons kill team from the new Shadow Vaults by Games Workshop. Also, thank you to Games Workshop for sending this early access copy of the Shadow Vaults kill team box set. This paint job does not need an airbrush, but I will be using one because they're fun. If you don't have an airbrush, you'll want a bright silver primer. I only have Lead Belcher, which is a bit dark, but it also works, though I would recommend dry brushing the models with a bright silver after priming them. Now the paint job we'll be showing in this starts with a black primer, which you can do with a rattle can primer or with your airbrush primer. After priming in black, I'm going to do a metallic Zenithal prime using two different colors of silver. The first of which is called Metal Color Steel from Vallejo. This is a method I stole from Vince Venturella and it seems to work pretty well. I'm going to spray each model from 45 degrees from below and straight ahead with this color. I don't want to completely cover over the black primer on the underside, though it is okay if that does happen. You're still going to get some decent contrast. Once all the models are sprayed from below with a steel, I'm switching to Metal Color Silver. This is the color I would recommend for your bright dry brushing as well, or perhaps Shining Silver from Army Painter. This color is being sprayed from 45 degrees from above and also straight down, and that's going to create some nice bright highlights. A bright silver is really going to make the speed paints pop when they're applied. And as I said before, you don't need the Zenithal Prime. It does create some nice contrast, but you could just spray the model with a bright silver primer if you want to and save yourself some time. Next, you'll want to pick two colors for your models, a main color and an accent color. I constantly refer to the color wheel because I have no imagination. For my Necrons, I went with a deep blue and a bronze color and a bright orange glow color. And as you can see, the main color and accent color are opposites on the color wheel. These are just recommendations, of course. You can use whatever colors you want, but if you want two colors that really stand out next to each other, the color wheel is a good guide. Like maybe you want to go with a military green and glowing magenta eyes. And you don't have to go exactly opposite. If I picked blue for instance, anything in the three regions opposite of blue will stand out pretty well. So starting with the bronze color, I'll be using dark wood over the silver. I find the best way to use these paints is to have a small reusable palette or some small cups handy. I wouldn't put the speed paints on a wet palette because they're so intense they will soak through the parchment paper. I'm going to use this brown on all the ornamentation, for lack of a better word, so all the bling hanging from the Necrons, as well as some accents here and there on the weapons. The death marks look a lot like normal troopers, except for that big sniper rifle they have, but I want to set them apart a bit by painting their legs with a brown as well. Next I'm using Cloudburst Blue, and this is going over the armor. One tip for getting even coverage with the speed paints is to load your brush, cover the spot you're painting, next dab the excess paint off your brush onto paper towel, and then soak up any spots where the paint is pooling with the tip of your brush. I sometimes forget to do that myself, but that really is the best way to get a consistent hue on all the parts of the model. Alright, with the armor plates covered, it's time for the smaller details. I'm next going to add some black over parts of the weapons. Not going to cover everything, I do want to leave some of that original silver showing. I'm mostly painting this onto the butts and main body of the guns, and the shafts of the staves. I'm also going to paint a few other spots here and there on the bodies of the models. I really like that shiny metal skeleton underneath, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now for all the metal parts that haven't been covered in speed paint, I'm using non-oil gloss to darken the gaps between the metal parts, and you can use any black wash for this, but the glossy version barely leaves any tint behind, so the silver should stay looking mostly silver. Next I want to paint all the glowy bits, and to do that I need a bright undercoat, so I'm going to start with a light beige, and this one is Rakarth Flesh. This is going over tubes, eyes, and orbs. And there's a lot of orbs on these things, so some of them are just gonna stay silver. I'm painting on a beige color first because the white would probably take many layers to cover up that silver.
I'm also going to try something with these weapon heads, so I'm going to go ahead and paint those with the beige as well. Now I'm switching to the white and I'm going to paint over all of the beige areas and I'm trying to get a nice solid white cover over all these spots. It's probably going to take two thin coats of each color to get a good white. So all the white is on but before I hit these guys with the neon paint I'm first going to spray these with a matte varnish. I found that the metallics underneath are so smooth that other colors don't stick to them very well so the fluorescent colors can pull that white paint off. Once the varnish is dry, I'm starting with some fluorescent orange from Vallejo. I've mixed this with a bit of water because it's basically a gel when it comes out. It's also not very opaque, so I'm adding one layer over everything that's white, letting that dry, and then adding a second layer. I'm not being super neat with this, I'm just getting a big gob on my brush and then completely covering the white areas. Next I'm switching to a thin down white paint and I'm either painting a starburst type pattern in the middle of each orb and eyeball or I'm just stippling some white paint into the middle. For the final fluorescent color I'm mixing up about a 4 to 1 mix of yellow and orange fluorescent paint. And yes I'm an idiot for trying to mix these colors with all these dark colors around it just waiting to get sucked into the mix. Now I'm taking a big gob of this stuff and I'm completely covering the orbs and the eyes and the tubes. That white spot in the middle should look like a brighter glowing orange. Alright for the weapon heads of the staves I wanted a fast method for making them look semi decent. So I first took my brightest yellow and completely covered them. Next I mixed in an equal amount of orange and I stippled this on most of the blade except for the very edge. Then I used some pure orange and I stippled this onto the inner 50% of the blade. Next I mixed in an equal amount of some Morn Fang Brown and then I stippled this color close to the shaft of the weapon. This might seem like it's taking a long time but it's actually pretty fast to do. Now I'm taking some white ink and I'm dropping this into all of the grooves of the weapon. And the final step is just to take some of that super bright neon orange mix that we created and slather that all over the weapon head. And that is the entire kill team finished. The basing is very basic, just some Vallejo brown earth and pebbles in case you're curious. I hope you enjoyed the video and a huge thanks to all of our supporters on Patreon and for everyone subscribed to the channel. This is Mike from Watch It Paint It and I'll see you next time.